Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and today we are finally doing our trailer analysis for Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. I am beyond excited for this. There's so much to talk about here. This is just the beginning of all the analysis and dissecting of this trailer. And I'm just so amped for this. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond is happening. We have footage. And there's really just a lot to get into, so I would like to dive into that today. But before going forward, let me ask that if you do enjoy my content, to so please subscribe and hit that notification bell. So I'm going to be going through this YouTube trailer here and then comparing different things and showing you different examples and explain some context and theories. But right from the beginning, what they say here is Cosmic Year 20X9 Galactic Federation Research Facility. And this part's important because it's explaining to us that this is a Galactic Federation research facility. In other words, it's a place where the Galactic Federation works at. And I think it's something important to keep in mind in terms of understanding the setting and the story elements that are going on here. So just keep it in mind as, as we progress throughout the trailer. You can hear the rain. It's raining right now. You hear thunder in the background. Samus's ship looks incredible. Something I want to show you guys here. Just going back a few frames. One thing I'll note is that every time I press a frame back, you'll notice that it moves, right? And what that means is that it's 60 frames per second because you can go back 60 times. There are 60 frames per second here. So this is a 60 FPS game. If there is any doubt the Switch version would be 60 FPS, we now basically have our confirmation that it is indeed 60 frames per second. But you'll also notice there are ships in the background here in the sky, which I think is very cool. So I just want to point those out and explain the FPS thing. But as she comes in, the ship just looks incredible. Like I am just in awe of how much better this looks than it did in Metroid Prime 3. Now, obviously, there's a generational leap here, right? Or if not two or more, but there's a lot of big differences with this ship. So this is clearly meant to be something like what the ship was in Metro Prime 3. It's extremely similar in terms of shape, but the extra level of detail is it's just so much greater. There's a lot more realistic lighting here and the shadows. You can see a, a wearing down on the plating of this ship. It looks a lot more realistic and it just looks amazing. This is like my dream scenario for how I would have envisioned Samus's ship in a modern Metroid game. And here it is. But now on to the star of the show, Samus herself. You see a little glow. You can see actually what's really cool. Like you can see the light protruding from the ship and you can see it bouncing off of her, which just looks awesome. You can even notice that Samus is kind of leaning on one hip here. So she's got a little bit of a, of a style to her, you know, so, which I've always appreciated. And here you can see that a little bit more obviously compared to prior Prime games, I would say. But now let's continue on. Something I'll note here. If you go back, you'll see. Let me go back a little bit quicker. You can just see that her jetpack is is boosting her as she spins into the air, which is cool. And then there's another shot at the ships. But as she lands, brilliant landing, looks awesome. You can see like here in the back, you can see like debris and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, that was. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's just. It's a nice little detail. But what you'll notice, right, pay attention to all the debris on the ground, right? You can even hear it as well once you land. Let me go further back. All right, here we go. You see, you heard that? It, like, sprinkled across. It's not the rain. It's something else. But now just looking at Samus. I had to let that play. That's like the trademark Metroid little tune. It, feel, it sounds so good in this modern way. They really put some work in there. But looking at Samus herself, I think this is something that's really interesting, like just looking at her updated model and how it's changed, because it certainly has changed. And some people feel like it looks like the same as how Samus looked in Metroid Prime 1. And there's definitely similarities, like with the texturing and stuff, but is different. So looking at them side by side, what you can tell here is that her shoulder 
um, plates, right? These giant balls, they're not as giant as they were in Metroid Prime. You can actually see a gap between her neck and head and these, these shoulder plates. So they've slimmed them down a little bit. You also notice that the leg plates don't seem to stick out as much either. And basically what we see with this model of Samus, she just looks a lot more slimmed down and slender. You can see that there is likely a female under this suit. And that wasn't so clear with the original Metroid Prime. So I, I really like the shape here. This looks like a more sleek design and I'm, I'm really feeling it. And the arm can looks amazing too. And oh, this game just looks incredible. But let's let's talk about some UI changes right here. Some really cool stuff. Uh, so some obvious things. You can see the that she has missiles here. She has her energy. But also here to the left, there's a missile launcher, right? And there's like almost like a D-pad sort of overlay here. But we only see the missile launcher. And there's these other options. What could these other options be? I don't see an option to switch into your scan visor or any other visors like that nor do I see many sort of beam weapon changers. So it's, cu it's very curious what's going on with the weapons here. Are there no longer new be beam weapons, or is there something else going on? We'll, we'll, we'll need more info there, but there's definitely something different they're doing as opposed to the typical sort of swap your beams or swap your visors as they did in Primes 1 and 2. You, see, you have your radar up here, which looks to be fairly comparable. We'll, we'll look at it in some battle sequences a little bit later. But also you have the map and the map looks a little bit different. So one, you can see the direction you're headed in. There's a compass, which I really appreciate, but also it doesn't look 3D. It looks flat. And I think that's probably going to be a little bit easier for people to read and understand. So they made some side adjustments to the mini map, and I think it's actually a change for the better. So that's already an immediate improvement, I would say. Oh, my goodness. You can see that that huge blast, the purple blasting in there. It sounds incredible. But also notice that there's raindrops you can see coming down Samus's visor, but also her arm cannon as well, like in Prime Remastered. Oh, we, we get our first look at the space pirates here. But let me go back a moment here and just play this in slow motion. I think it's easier to appreciate it that way. Oh, mute it so it doesn't sound as weird. So you can just see the rain slowly dripping down. You see just how good the arm cannon looks. These shots, the space pirates, there's so much going on here. You can see a lot going on in the backgrounds in the sky. Beautiful stuff. Something here I'll note. You'll notice that the missile launcher, right? She shoots her missiles. But it's not in the way it used to look in Primary Mastered. Uh, it's a little bit slender now. You can see more of what's in front of you, which I think is an important change. But let's go back to normal speed now. And continue on with this trailer with audio. There's a dead spice pirate over there. It's a barrel. You can see little particles coming down as it collides to the ground. There's just so much detail in this trailer. It's impressive. I will say that the textures look a little bit um, low in detail. I imagine this is because they want to get it running well on Switch, but they may have a higher texture detailed version for switch too but you still see the lights in the background the fire it looks good and actually i do see some depth here with the map but it looks to be portrayed in a way it's a little bit easier to read and understand for people so this is actually really interesting what they did here so what you'll notice she just came in and scanned the space pirate there was no like delay there was no switching to a visor she just had the option to scan immediately once you locked onto it. Something, so one, we have the, the return of the scan visor, but two, it doesn't look like there's a scan visor. It's more like a scan option. You do it in dynamically with your combat visor normally. So there may not be any more weird visors, or if they are, they're being handled a bit differently. And we still have the typical flavor text we get, like we have and we've had in prior Prime games, where you can scan a dead space pirate or animal or what have you. And you learn about what happened to them. It shows the weak points where they were hurt and such. So it's very interesting, cool stuff. It's back and I love it. She blasts that. And we clearly see the return of the Morph Ball, which is very nice to see. But going back a little bit here, we can get a quick look at her transition 
into Morph Ball. Man, like just just seeing the lightning coursing around her like this. There's so much cool detail with the animation. You see the 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 lighting of it, the blue lightning around her. It just looks so good. It's crazy. There's a lot going on in this game. See particles in the air. Here, there's clearly space pirates. It looks like they're trying to break into this door here. Might hear an explosion later, I believe. Yep, there it is. They just blew up and broke in. But what you'll notice here, there are people fighting them. It looks like this is a, a research facility, as we were already told. And they are, they're carrying something away, actually. And if I'm not mistaken, this looks kind of like the logo of the game, actually. So that's interesting. It looks like there's something really important that they are trying to carry away. And I don't think it's a Metroid. I think it's something else, and the space pirates want it. A quick thing I want to point out here. You'll notice... Go back a few frames. There is what appears to be an energy tank here. So while I definitely think this area of the game is very clearly like maybe the prologue of the game, the beginning section, you know, the inciting incident for everything that takes place. Uh, but you will be able, you will be able to revisit it. We can see that with this energy tank and the enemies do die to a few different shots and Samus doesn't appear to have any extra sort of weapons or anything open slots for different abilities and such. So I think very clearly this is a beginning area, but you can revisit because we do see an energy tank here, apparently. So that would be for more life. Uh, currently, Samus only has 99 health, which is in line with the beginning of the game. But if she were to acquire this, she would then gain 100 extra energy and then basically have 200 health or 199. But here we, here we see more space parts shuttling in. They just blast in here. And yeah, we get a good look at them here. They got plating. There's some really great detail on there. Like they look gritty, you know, like this is not this. There's some weird stuff going on with their skin, but they look awesome. They look like epic space pirates in this modern Metroid Prime game. Now, this is a part that really excited me. Um, so there's actually several things to note here. Notice that there's multiple things on the radar. There's green things, there's orange, and then there's red. So I believe the orange is what you're locked on to. The red are enemies and the green, I am going to speculate, are allies. Because we know there are allies in this area. As we saw, there are some people working for the research facility trying to take away whatever this item is. That's a space pirate, so trying to break in and get to them. So that's what I'm thinking this is. But notice here what's about to happen. She's about to jump to the right. Oh, that was beautiful. So I'll just do it again, but this time in slow motion because it, it looks awesome. But there's a, some cool things here. One, so one, you can still lock on and strafe left and right and dash left and right. But also you'll notice she tilts her arm cannon as she does the charge blast. Look at that. That looks amazing. Missiles can transition in seamlessly. All right, let's. Let's um, speed this back up here. So we see this cutscene. Um, there's a ship right there. There's this, like a green room sort of thing. You see what's going outside. There's a smoke. Here enters space pirates, a couple metroids, and that's 100% Silux. And that's just crazy. So for some context for those that are unaware, the Silux is a hunter. He was one of the hunters that was competing with Samus and Metroid Prime Hunters. But Silex also was following Samus at the end of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, the original trilogy of Metroid Prime. But then later on, the events of Metroid Prime Federation Force take place. And at the end of that game, Silex breaks into a Federation Force facility and steals a Metroid. Hatches the Metroid egg there, so we presume that that Metroid bonds with Silex as its parent. We've seen this before in Metroid. So, for example, in Metroid, Samus Returns, Metroid 2, Samus runs into a baby Metroid, and it hatches in front of her, and it bonds to her, and it thinks of her as her mother, right? So this is how Metroids tend to bond when they hatch. It happens in real life with certain animals as well. And so one Metroid is bonded in that way through Federation Force, but here we see two. So... I think it's reasonable to assume that 
he's getting more Metroids, right? He's working with the Space Pirates very clearly, and they are attacking or invading different research facilities of the Federation force. And there's something else that I think they're trying to get here. It's not just about the Metroids. This seems like more like a quest to power, in my opinion. But anyways, just speaking on just like how Salix looks, you can see that there is an environment reflecting off his helmet here. You can see the orange glow from the fires. You can even see some wear and tear here. Looks pretty darn good. I will note that up close, when you pause things, you can see some aliasing here. I would say, while well, you can see the wear, it, it, the texture is an extremely high resolution. You can see that with the Metroids as well. But I think that also goes to show that this is an in-engine cutscene, just like how it worked with the prior Prime games. And I think it is also suggestive of improvements we can see in a cross-gen Switch 2 version. We'll see higher resolution textures. You won't see little jaggies like this or low resolution textures like this, which are subtle differences. But when you account for little things like this and just the overall texture detail of the environment, I think it will make for a big difference. But continuing on here. So one thing I'll note is that when she blasts her arm cannon, you don't see like the light reflect off in the same way. So that's something that's missing from the older Prime games is more like Prime Remastered. There's still a lot of lighting effects. I mean, like literally here you see light. This is like an opening in the ceiling and you can see light bouncing off the space part. So there are good lighting effects. But in terms of lighting from her arm can, it doesn't seem to be there. I feel like that's something we could see in a cross-gen version for Switch 2. And actually, I'm going to butt in here from the future. I did notice a part where when Samus is shooting, we can see light coming from her arm cannon. So maybe it kind of depends on the spot or the kind of shot, but it does seem to work at least sometimes. But uh, continuing on, I want to show you the cutscene without interrupting here. Actually. Sorry, I just got confirmation of a theory as I'm going on. So notice the green circles with the radar. We actually see that there are others shooting at the space pirates, not just Samus. So I do think that is indeed her allies. Yeah, yep, they're right there. So that's it. Green circles are allies on your radar. Perfect. All right, so now for this cutscene. Wow. So did you hear like that guitar as Silex came in? There are some really cool sounds and musical tunes that they're playing throughout this. Like I get the impression that this game has incredible sound design, incredible music as well. We'll speak more on that in a moment here. But you'll notice we get a nice good look at Samus's visor and Silex reflecting off of it here, which just looks amazing. And here we see the Metro Prime 4 logo and they say beyond in a moment here but notice this is like a, a shot of space but there's like a star maybe a portal it's very purpley beyond but yeah so like this this shape here looks like the item that they were carrying away the scientists or researchers in that earlier scene so there's definitely something going on with that it's clearly very pivotal and it likely ties to this beyond naming they have for prime and I think it is related to portals in some way, because one, this does look like a little bit like a portal, but I think there's more to it. We'll get into that in a moment here. So let this play. So cool. All right. So this this next scene is really, really important for a lot of reasons. All right. It's, first off, it's incredibly beautiful. But if you look here, you will notice there is a portal. That looks like a portal. That's not a door. That is a portal. If, 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 um, if you pay attention, it's actually pulsing a little bit. Um, well, maybe. Is it, is it potentially a, por a, a door? I don't think it's a door. It, it looks more like a portal to me, something like we, what we saw in Metroid Prime 2. Um, but let's, let's slow it down and look at it again. Yeah, to me, that's a portal. You see it sort of moving. So I, I, I think it's definitely a portal. And there's definitely something going on with portals here. Maybe the beyond is about reaching other areas beyond other other worlds. Maybe that's why Silex is chasing after this this piece of equipment that the research facility has, because being able to portal around to places might be a pretty important tool to have. Or maybe that little thing that we see has an entirely different meaning, but still clearly portals seem to be playing a role here, it looks like. But let's start this from the beginning here. Pay attention to the music and how just good it sounds. Wow. 
man, that just sounds so good. It reminds me of Metroid Prime 3 tunes. It reminds me of Metroid Prime 1. It really does sell me on just this game having really good music and sound design. And I think that's an important point to make here because you look at something like Metroid Dread, fantastic game, but the music isn't something that's so heralded. There are some good tunes that I, that I definitely like, but I wouldn't say Metroid Dread has the strongest music in the series. But we've already seen throughout this two-minute trailer multiple moments of really good sound design, really good music that could become iconic moving forward. So I would say Metroid Prime 4 from a sound music design perspective from this single trailer is already off to an incredible start. But there's still a lot more to say with this second scene they're showcasing here. So let's go back a little bit and break down a little bit more. Another thing I'll point out here is that Samus still has her armor intact. It doesn't look like she got powered down. So if she does lose her abilities from the beginning area of the game, it doesn't seem to be visibly apparent, at least in this section here. So we shall see on that, but currently we don't have any confirmation that she loses her powers. So these animals, they're clearly some sort of bird-like creature that are indigenous to this exotic alien world which is one of the biggest things i wanted to see in this game just like i wanted to see fauna and weird alien life and creatures and exotic environments and they're like yep here you go that's what you wanted here it is and so this is a cool looking creature you can sort of see that this is a, a pretty detailed model but it does get me thinking there may be some motion blur going on here but I definitely feel like, you know, there are going to be things like this. You look at the textures on the ground and the terrain. It all looks pretty good. But you can see a lot of room for improvement for a Switch 2 version. So higher texture detail, better lighting effects. These things could look really good on Switch 2. But yet still, this Switch 1 version is arguably the best looking Switch game. It looks incredible. And it has me very excited. There's a lot more here. You see the waterfall, you see this mist, it looks great. You can see a flock of all these alien birds, which is awesome. I'm going to pause it here because there's actually a lot I want to talk about with the scene. So you can actually kind of make out, um, if I go back, pay attention to the bottom left. Like It almost looks like there's something you could explore down there, but also here to the right as well. Looks like there's different levels here. Perhaps you could explore there, potentially. And you got a bridge here to the left, this giant tree here. This is really evoking like a, a massive environment that we can explore. I'm getting very Monolith Soft vibes, Xenoblade vibes. And so in the Xenoblade games, you typically see a large, awe-inspiring structures off into the distance, like this bridge, like this giant tree. And it looks like you can go over there, right? So it, I don't think this game is open world, but I do think it might be maybe open linear. There are going to be moments that feel very much like the prior Prime games, but there are also going to be scenes like this where there is a vast environment to explore and you're going to see giant structures and off into the distance and you can go there. And so I think there's going to be an emphasis on that. I mean, just looking at this background here, like some parts of it almost look photorealistic, like off into the distance, like you see like this mountainside with the moss and the trees and bushes, like it looks really, really good. You could even see some things coming down from the tree, like there's like a mist or dust coming down, looks amazing. But here we have the title, or not the title, the release year 2025. This was expected in my opinion, this is what I've been sort of predicting. And it's because I believe there's going to be a Switch 2 version. And then looking at this game, looking at what we've seen from the visuals, it looks amazing for Switch, but I see a lot of ways it can be improved upon. And it coming out in 2025 positions it very clearly in that Switch 2 window, in my opinion. So I think this is going to be a cross-gen game. And yeah, this trailer was just amazing. I'm so excited for this game. I Yeah, it's incredible. But anyways, everyone, that is my initial analysis on this Metroid Prime 4 Beyond trailer. I think there's still a lot to dissect here and dig into. But, so this is just my initial thoughts here. But is there anything that I didn't point out that you noticed? Let me know in the comments below. I'm excited to talk about this game. Man, it just looks amazing. I can't wait. I'm hyped. But I'll see you all really soon. Take care.